lateness of our start. Um, my uh, self-appointment as the SAP of uh, President-elect Bongbong Marcos has generated unwarranted uh, numbers of invitations. So, uh, uh, super ate ng Pangulo, there's no such thing, but they seem to think uh, that it's somehow important. So, maraming salamat po, and I thank all those who are here, particularly our chairman of Comelec, as well as uh, the representatives of the ICT, CICC, and uh, NAMFREL, IDEALS, the IT experts whom uh, we've relied upon time and again. We all congratulate Attorney Ivan Uy for his recent appointment. <laughs> Would that the uh, confirmation tomorrow go as successfully? Um, okay, so uh, with that, uh, there is no need for a quorum because our previous meeting uh, ended up in a suspension. I would like to merely call upon our uh, committee secretary to uh, recognize the guests here present. And uh, as you all know, this is, uh, a, uh, this is uh, not an investigation as such, but simply a general assessment of the 2022 national and local elections. We are all aware that the job of the legislature is not to uh, charge or uh, uh, file charges, but simply to uh, legislate. So therefore, our effort today is in aid of legislation, which are the areas where we can clearly improve, despite the fact that this was lauded as the quickest election, the fastest counting and canvas, the truth is there are many things that uh, even the COMELEC itself has uh, mentioned need fixing, need improvement, need upgrading. So with that, we recognize through our committee secretary all the resource persons who have kindly uh, come today. Good morning. The Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation would like to acknowledge the presence of its distinguished guests, namely from Commission on Elections, Chairman Saitamen Parangarungan, Commissioner Ray E. Bulay, Commissioner George Irwin M. Garcia, Commissioner Amy Torre Neri, Director Bartolome J. Chino Cruz Jr., Director Teopisto E. L. Nash Jr., Director Helen G. Aguila Flores, Director Jeannie V. Flororita, Director Maria Norina S. Tangaro Casinal, Director Margaret T. Ching, Director Julio Tadeus P. Hernan, Director Sonia Bea V. Lozada, from CICC, Executive Director Cesar O. Mancao II, Attorney Christopher Chu, from Department of Information and Communications Technology, Under Secretary Maria Victoria C. Castro, Director Antonio Edward E. Padre, From National Telecommunications Commission, Deputy Commissioner Edgardo Cabarios. From Technical Evaluation Committee, Director Antonio Ipadre and Director Edon Bolo. From Democracy, oh sorry, Democracy Watch is still not present. Yet. Um, from Globe Telecom, Attorney Ariel Tubayan. Our IT experts, Attorney Hubert Guevara, and our incoming Deputy Secretary, Attorney Ivan John Hill. From NAMFREL, Mr. Angel S. Avilia Jr. From PLDT, Attorney Kevin Pangan. From SMART, Attorney Roy Ibai. Mr. Anthony Fernandez. 
from Smartmatic Philippines, Attorney Christian Robert Lim. Meron pa pong hindi natawag? That will be all. Uh, uh, from Ideas, Attorney Donatello Hustiniani. Thank you. That will be all. And from PTCRD, Dr. Arlen Serrano. Thank you. That will be all, ma'am. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I hope we recognize anyone. If uh, there's anyone who's been forgotten or comes in late, please uh, let us know. Thank you very much. Uh, there are a number of questions that have arisen both in the media and as raised by the commissioners themselves. I think it was uh, Commissioner Garcia who reported that upwards of 1,800 VCMs needed fixing in some minor or major way. Uh, some were jammed, rejected ballots, had problems with scanners, were not printing, or had malfunctioning uh, printers. May uh, we know if there is further information about the same? With the time permission of the Honorable Chair. Yes, thank you. Commissioner uh, Garcia, you're recognized. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Madam Chair. After the verification with our uh, operations center, our SEMAC, we found out that uh, we, what we have actually, uh, we have 1,295 vote counting machines which were replaced. Uh, this is domestic, and for our overseas, we, there were 15 uh, vote counting machines um, uh, replaced, and therefore, all in all, we, we, we came up with 1,310 uh, vote counting machines replaced on election day. Likewise, as far as the SD cards, uh, Madam Chair is concerned, we have 611 here in the country, and we have se uh, seven SD cards replaced in uh, overseas voting, therefore we have 618 all in all replace uh, SD cards. So, so konti lang, actually yung SD card konti lang. That's the that's right, Madam Chair, yes. Uh -huh. And so, uh, more or less for, this was actually likewise the basis of the COMELEC giving additional honorarium for our uh, electoral boards, uh, support staff, mm -hmm. and uh, technicians in, the, in each and every precinct. So, across the board po yung binigay namin sa kanila. Ito lang po yung nagka-problema. Yung iba po, uh, Madam Chair, na binabanggit namin problema uh, dati, medyo uminit po yung machine because talaga pong sobrang dami. We have 83.07% of voters turn out on election day. So medyo uminit po yung machine. Kinakailangan gumamit kami ng mga, mga electric fans at nasolve naman po. Yung iba What naman po... What turn out? Sorry, I didn't catch 80, the number. Uh, 83.07%, Madam Chair, the highest in the history of Philippine election. I see. That's for local. Yes. Yes, and for overseas, we have 39% representing about 661,000 of the 1,697,000 uh, voters uh, registered in overseas voting. Thank you. We'll appreciate, the committee would appreciate the submission of those uh, um, data uh, upon completion, no? So, um, is uh, this number, the 1,310 VCMs that broke down, is this a number much larger than the previous elections, like 2016, for example, or the previous elections before that? There was a sense in uh, the provinces, at least uh, where I come from, where my mother comes from, na mas maraming nasira ngayon. Kung tutuusin, 2009 pa naman yan mga dineliver. So, nasa 13 years old na itong mga machine kahit i-refurbish pa ng todo. Is it significantly greater than the previous elections? With your permission, Madam Chair? Yes, yes, Commissioner uh, Bulay, for sure. What I have here uh, are 2019 figures. Mm -mm. Uh, ah, 2019, that's correct. Elections. Uh, defective SD cards recorded at 2,256. And defective VCMs, 1,400. Definitely, the 2022 election figures are lower than the 2019. I see. How many were the total SD cards once again? Um, that you said it's only 618 SD cards na nasira. Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair, whereas 611. Yeah, as, whereas Commissioner Bula is saying that uh, mas malala lang 2019 kasi umabot ng 2,252. Tama po ba yun? That is correct, Madam Chair. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, so what is the recommendation uh, pushing forward? I'm certain that you're all aware 
that uh, the budget has been more or less uh, prepared for 2023. And uh, moving forward, we know that we will still have another election this year. There is an SK Barangay election in December 5. Uh, and although that's manual, it's a harbinger of things to come. So uh, I am wondering if you have uh, already computed forward exactly what we should do with the VCM. So uh, we've gone through the repairs and so on. Um, and uh, perhaps partial or uh, complete replacement of these VCMs is in order. By the way, uh, just to put on the record, the election watchdog Contra Daya stated that the malfunctioning VCMs doubled from past elections. They seem to have uh, differing data. Yes, um, anyone has any suggestions so that, uh, well, as you know, we can amend and pass new laws here in the Senate and in Congress. And on the other hand, we have the major role of trying to put together a budget in these difficult times. So, sana, maisingit na natin kahit paano, kahit pa unti unte ang budget na kinakailangan para masayaayos itong mga VCM at iba pang problema natin. Kasi napakamahal kasi mag-overhaul ng lahat, sabay-sabay eh. Uh, yes, please. Yes. Anybody? Yes, uh, Chairman, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, dito po sa 2022 budget, uh, the committee requested uh, budget of 12 B. Billion, and uh, Congress uh, approved only eight billion. Kaya po napilita ng Komelik to refurbish the voting counting machines, and then we have these malfunctions in the divisions. So definitely, we will recommend to lease a new voting counting machines. Kasi itong mga divisions it's 13 years old, as you observe. Kailangan talaga ng gumamit ay ng bago na mga BCMs for the 2025 elections. Lahat sila, 2010 uh, ang unang gamit nila, all yes. of them. Pero ang pagkaalam ko, yung iba mas bulok kaysa sa yung iba naman, bago-bago pa. Tama ba yun? Um, yes, Commissioner Garcia. Um, with the kind permission of our Chairman, Madam Chair. Hindi, kasi um, necessarily we will have to face the replacement of the same. I'm certain that given our uh, rather... Uh, uh, dire straits economically, um, uh, we will have to do it uh, in phases. So, siguro, i-address muna natin yung pinakaluma. Yes, Madam Chair, uh, with your kind uh, permission, we actually, yung pong lumang luma, 97,000 po lahat-lahat yun. 97,000, and we lease about 11,100 additional uh, new machines. And so, ako po personally would recommend to the N-Bank, in case uh, we'll still be there, to retire the 97,000, it's no longer uh, feasible at this point to use them by to use these machines in 2025. Masyado na pong uh, matanda, nakatatanda yung mga machines. Kung sinabi mong i-retire, i-replace ba yan? O i-release, bibilhin ba yan? Paano yung sistema? Kasi matinding, mainit na usapin din yan eh, kung i-release na ulit, tapos hindi pala natin pag-aari pero ang taas-taas ng presyo. Uh, 97,000 is a very large number, number one. And number two, uh, what arrangement do you propose? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, based on the experience of the Commission election, it's always leasing the machine that is the best option, not purchasing the machine. Why? Simply because we have to uh, rent a warehouse, we have to store the machines, and at the same time, it's very difficult to maintain the machines nagbabago po kasi yung technology every now and then, months lang po. Eh, pero sa totoo lang, binayaran rin naman natin ng refurbishment eh. Yes, Your Honor, but it's Hindi a naman na libre yun eh. Kasi the argument for leasing always is that we can get newer models, that we will be updated and so on. But they never updated anything. It's still 2009. They still made us pay for refurbishing. So there was really no uh, savings or improvement on that score. We spent 660 million, uh, Madam Chair, for purposes of refurbishment, that will be that is actually a smaller amount compared to to leasing again new new machines. So it's the 660 million. Any idea, po chair or uh, commissioners, kung magkano yung uh, uh, leasing ng 97,000? Dami nun eh. May idea po kayo? 
Director Sino Cruz and uh, the rest who have the institutional memory of Comelec. Sige po. Hindi uh, naman kayo ganun katanda. Ginigising ko lang kayo. <laughs> Thank you for that one. Uh, in the past uh, elections, from, uh, the, the lease price is always uh, about 70% of the purchase price. So 70% lagi. So that would be? Lease, lease price. Uh, Kaya nga. So what would that be in pesos? Well, kung, kung just for the sake of uh, discussions, kung 100,000 or 70, it would be 70,000. Yeah. 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 So that would bring us to 70,000 times the 97,000. 6.7. 6 6.7, right? Yeah, somewhere there. Okay, so 6.7 billion. I don't think we have that amount burning a hole in our pockets right now. But uh, I think we could start, as you said, kahit face-by-face uh, face lang muna, di ba? Kasi napakabulok. Itong 11,000 na uh, bago-bago, when were they uh, procured or leased? Do you recall? Uh, Ma'am, they were uh, leased uh, for the 2022 elections. Ah, so they're, they're recent. They were yeah, yeah, How much yeah. did it cost? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the idea of how much. Yes, if you could give us lump so that we have some basis for comparing and uh, so that uh, the sponsors for the COMLEC budget will have uh, ground to ask for greater sums. So um, the other question is, itong bagong batch, may issues sa ibang lugar na hindi daw interoperable? Iba bang klase? Alam niyo di ba nagbabago yung software, nagbabago yung mekanarya, pag bago-bago. Uh, and 13 years is a long, long time for technology. So, uh, were they in fact interoperable, the new ones versus the old ones? Kasi may nagreklamang probinsya eh. Yeah, yeah, they, they were in fact uh, operable, uh, Madam Chair. In fact, they underwent po din sila ng stress test. And... Uh, uh, lahat naman po, uh, okay, yung talaga pong na-report sa amin, sa aming SEMAC, sa aming Operation Center, Madam Chair, ay uh, yung mga machines na lumang-luma talaga uh, from uh, reporting yung mismong, uh, yung mismong uh, uh, umiinit, hindi, hindi, hindi pumapasok yung mga balota. Yung iba naman po, Madam Chair, ay yung mismong scanner, nasira yung po pala. Every now and then, pag luma, nakakailanganin mong gumamit nung uh, special, special, uh, uh, wiper at the same time yung uh, liquid na ginagamit po dun sa, sa scanner. So all of these uh, things happen dito po sa mga lumang machine sa 97,000. But uh, with all due respect, wala po kami na natanggap na report para dun sa 11,000 ng mga new machines. So yung mga bagong machine, walang reklamo. I, I, I don't know our poll uh, watchdogs sa uh... Walang reklamo dun sa mga bago. Parang we couldn't tell the difference na eh. Alin ba yung bago, alin yung bago-bago. Alin yung uh, luma? Were they all deployed all over the newer ones or were they in chosen places? Yung 1,100 po, uh, Madam Chair, ng mga machines ay uh, contingency machines namin. And so what happened Your actually... Your contingency machines were the old ones or the new ones? Uh, may mga new ones din po doon sa, sa uh, contingency. What we are going to do, Madam Chair, is we're going to provide the committee the breakdown of all these 107,000, uh, 106,174 machines mm -hmm. and the 1,100 machines and how uh, we were able to distribute the breakdown uh, as far as the old ones and the new ones are, are concerned. Right. Um, we are buying from the same or we are leasing from the same supplier. Is that correct? All the time. And who is that supplier? The service provider of the Commission, Your Honor, is uh, the Smartmatic. Also Smartmatic. So uh, the issue of interoperability does not arise. In the event that uh, we are able to budget for partial replacement and uh, refurbishment of the rest from the same company, and it is no longer Smartmatic that is the service provider, uh, will we have issues of interoperability? There always are, di ba? Pag nagpapalit ka ng provider, di natin masabi, di ba? Well, if I may, uh, Madam Chair, 
we because, have uh, then we'll be uh, confined to smartmatic um, all the time given that the that they are the only ones who are able to provide and to refurbish the old ones uh, the 97,000 uh, were, were uh, sold to us uh, by uh, the same company and the, the 11,100 uh, were likewise leased to the same company, uh, Madam Chair. So in any event that we will be retiring the 97,000 and we will have 11,000, the 11,000 is, uh, is now is, is being leased to the, from the same company. But as far as the 97,000 is concerned... If you get a new one, you'll be able to smart math. That's what I said. Kung bibili ka na naman na hindi naman bibili, kundi mag-uupa ka ng bago, kinakailangan galing sa Smartmatic. Otherwise, hindi naman, uh, hindi naman sila interoperable, ano? Uh, that is a very uh, serious and, uh, and uh, logical concern, Madam Chair. And, but then, we the, everybody will still have to undergo the bidding process in accordance with the uh, pre-qualification requirements set by the Commission. Kasi yan ang laging problema, di ba? Ang nire-reklamo, kinakailangan yung parehong makina, eh di lagi nalang Smartmatic. Kaya despite uh, so many uh, complaints, uh, we seem to uh, renew its contract time and time again. I think the other issue will be the uh, changes in the warranty and penalty clauses of the maintenance contracts. We saw very clearly, and I think the chairman was quite uh, uh, firm about this, that... Um, Comelec and uh, the national government have very little recourse. It's either you terminate contract or withhold payment. Yun lang, di ba? Um, should we be uh, more careful in the drafting of warranty and penalty clauses so that we have more options in the event of malfunction and so on? Any uh, suggestions moving forward, Bob? Madam Chair. Yes, uh, Commissioner Bolaris. Can I suggest that we ask uh, Dedo Elnas to answer the first question? Okay. So there's clarity, and then to come to the next, uh, he's willing. He's here, our technical person. He, he more or less is familiar with what happened, Madam Boy, Chair. Director Thank Elna. you. Suki ko yan. Musta na. Good morning for Yes, you. Director, please. Uh, is there anything you can think of so that uh, we have a better, more watertight, and... Uh, more flexible um, warranty and penalty clauses within our contract, giving government and COMELEC for more options. With the permission from the Honorable Chair? Yes, please. Um, as far as the uh, interoperability is concerned, Your Honor, mayroon na tayong experience dyan. That was 1998. Uh, Arm elections were in, there were two providers uh, as far as the Carnac of the Elections is concerned. And ultimately, we have that experience, the interoperability problem, because uh, hindi nag-uusap itong dalawang provider natin. Ay, yun nga yung sinasabi noon eh. Yeah, yes, ma'am. And uh, we were fortunate enough that uh, when we bidded the additional uh, machines for the 2022 national and local elections, same provider, provider po ang nanalo. So there's not much concern as far as interoperability is concerned because parehong provider, parehong system. Yes, Director, but we're talking about moving forward. Ang problema nito, forever and ever na lang tayo nakatakos sa Smartmatic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yes, Your Honor. Uh, in fairness to yes. Smartmatic, Your Honor. Eh, hindi na tayo magbibidding yan. Sa ma kanila na yung kontrato. Yeah. Uh, hindi po ganun, Your Honor. In fairness to Smartmatic, uh, they went through the process of bidding po. No, I Whether understand that, but I'm just saying that practically speaking, given that other suppliers will uh, not provide machines that are interoperable, we're stuck with whoever supplier we have at present. Now, if in case the, the budget will, would per permit us, Your Honor, uh, to the point that we will be leasing new machines, then new technology and new provider can come and join the, or participate in the bidding, Your Honor. Pero and realistically, di ba, Director Elnas, pinag-usapan na natin, imposible mangyari ito in one fell swoop. Yung 6.7B na sinasabi, medyo mabigat yun, ano, lalo na sa panahong ito. So, necessarily, dahan-dahan uh, yan, by batch yan, di ba? Practically speaking, naisip ko lang, 
uh, it needs to be that every batch needs to be smart matic otherwise it's not going to work with the rest hindi naman po your honor but there has there has to be some technical adjustments that must be uh, conducted if in case may bo may bagong provider uh, napapasok together with itong mga lumang machines namin to work for the elections your honor yes uh, these are considerations that need to be kept in view um, moving forward so with the warranty and penalty clauses are uh, you considering other action i remember the chairman was rather concerned that the only thing he could do was really just withhold payment or cancel the contract, which was clearly not possible. Three months, six weeks before the election, ano? So, parang nakatali ang kamay natin, wala tayong magawa eh. Are there other warranties and penalty clauses we can craft so that we are better protected uh, all along the process? Uh, Your Honor, I, I think uh, it is within the ambit of the law department to, uh, as far as the drafting of the contract and uh, more so pro provisioning on the penalties and other uh, concerns, uh, Your Honor. Yes, um, I, uh, I will have to ask your help na in Comelec because uh, I think there's a public outcry that the penalty structure should be in place and that in fact it should provide significantly and progressively steeper penalties depending on the uh, malfunction, the number, the seriousness. Pag sumobrang lumobo na yung nasisira, edi syempre papagalitan mo ng todo. Eh, ang hirap naman na winibithold mo nang winibithold yung bayad, eh baka maalintala pa yung uh, timing ng eleksyon, ma-delayed naman yung schedule natin. So, alimbawa, I was just thinking, I mean, this is just, I need your suggestions, you're the expert on the ground. Um, Director Elnas, for example, if less than 50 VCMs experience serious malfunctions, the penalty will be a certain sum multiplied by the number of the VCMs. But halimbawa, 50 to 100 VCMs, in reality what happened is it's usually over 1,000. Dapat, the penalty will be twice the preceding multiplied by the number of the VCMs. Parang ganon, di ba? Pag malalang malala at laganap talaga yung sira, Obvious ba? Par mas matindi rin yung parusa progressively. Tama ba yun? P pwede naman ganun, ma'am. Uh, that will be incorporated in the contract, Your Honor. Bago ma-implement, ma-execute yung, ano, yung contract, ma Your Honor. Okay, so these are serious considerations. Um, the, uh, uh, I'm perfectly willing to uh, bring the proposal of buying or leasing new VCMs perhaps in tranches, as much as we can afford, within the general appropriations. But at the same time, we have to keep in view that they need to be interoperable without at the same time uh, shackling the COMELEC uh, to the same service provider. And also being uh, more um, um, nuanced in our warranty and penalty clauses so that we are allowed more elbow room in the event of malfunction. Um, is, uh, can I get some help from the Comelec? You don't have to do it this minute, but you know, it's just uh, things we need to think about because uh, this is really uh, to improve our electoral process. Attorney Ivan Uy, I think you raised your hand. Yes, yes, Madam Chair. Um, I just want to ask a question. Uh, Comelec for this year's uh, election, actually purchase the software from Smartmatic. So uh, with that purchase of the software, will it affect the interoperability in case uh, Comelec acquires other machines from other providers? Thank you, Bob. Yes, is there anyone in uh, Comelec who's willing to answer? Usually, Commissioner Casquejo answers this sort of thing, but he's not here today. Is there anyone who'd like to come forward? Yes, Director Elnas, um, we were talking about the hardware and the VCM machines, but now the question has arisen that uh, the software is also sold by Smartmatic and hence clearly operable with the machines. Paano nga kung nagbago yung software? Uh, Your Honor, with the permission of the Honorable Chair and Commissioners, may I refer the matter to Director Gene Florida, Your Honor, the technical, in charge of the technical aspect of uh, the election, Your Honor. I think she was here. Parang nakita ko. Oh, ayan. Uh, ayun. Director Florida, please.
Yes, good morning. Yes, I'm based on the contract for, on the software. Based on the contract or on the software. Um, the software as customized will be transferred to Comelec. The ownership will be transferred to Comelec and we can do modification in all of the the source codes of the AES from EMS, VCM, and CCS. So in that case, Paul, in case we have two different um, systems, we can already integrate them into one. Yes, Attorney Uy, is that responsive? Uh, well, uh, actually, um, yeah, I understand that um, it has been purchased and it has been transferred. So you could modify the source code. Uh, but, uh, but normally the concern is uh, the source codes are designed in such a way that it will really work uh, ideally because it is designed for the hardware that it uh, that it, that comes with that software so with a with a different type of hardware that comes in um, I think software modifications has its limits no? and uh, there might be instances where the hardware is so different that um, any type of modification on the software will not will not make it. Uh, for instance, uh, we're all using uh, Microsoft Windows on PCs, and then you decide to buy Macs. Uh, so your software on the Windows, although there's Windows for Macs, but um, uh, it actually will not be that ideal uh, a situation. So. I just want to make sure and um, also to raise uh, that the possibility that the purchase of the so software might just go to waste if um, a different um, a supplier of the hardware comes in. Thank you. Yes, that's share. right. Well yes. taken, Paul. I mean, uh, clearly software will have to go with the hardware yes. and uh, one has to work with the other in the event that you change it. Yes. Any further comments, Director Flororita? Yes, Your Honor. Um, when, when we say integration, we only have to adjust yung uh, purchase software. Doon lang po sa, ano, sa output. So, in case we have a different application, a, a different hardware, that will have a different software. So, uh, in order for the two systems to integrate, we will, um, we will ask the next provider to produce output the same as the AES. So the integration will be, ano, will be possible. I see. Yes. So there's a great deal to keep in mind, therefore, uh, both with the hardware as well as the software, as well as uh, uh, giving Comelec elbow room to uh, sanction or to otherwise uh, punish um, the uh, service providers such that we get a more efficient uh, um, um, Director Elnas, the Law Department, uh, patulong na lang, and Commissioner Garcia, if you come up with some of the data regarding turnout and uh, the final tally on the breakdowns of the VCM, because uh, people awaited. Maraming nagtanong sa dami ng VCM na nasira, but ang bilis. Yeah, is, is, is there a simple explanation for the public? Kasi, ayun, ayun, si uh, Director uh, Elna. Thank you very much. Director Flororita. Sige. We depend my son on the chair. Uh, unlike in 20, Your Honor, unlike in 2019, yung repair hubs namin is nasa Santa Rosa. So, lahat ng BCMs na masira on the ground, has to be transported to Santa Rosa for repair. Yes, it was this much time, better this time. Yeah, uh -huh. This time, uh, we established repair hubs, regional repair hubs, eight re regional repair hubs, para yung accessibility, yung speed in time for the repair and transportation mas madali. Tama. Uh -huh. That's one. Second, we coordinated with the AFP and PNP for speed speedy transport of defective or yung mga nasirang BCM from the precincts up to the regional hubs for repair. And at the same time, habang nire-repair ito, binabiyahe 
pinapasok namin yung contingency. Yung? Yung contingency in place ah, within okay. the province. Ah, okay. So, tuloy-tuloy. So, may mga instances tayo na tuloy-tuloy yung paggamit. Na, Although may reklamo rin na kulang na kulang yung spare BCNs, di ba? Yes, ma'am. Talagang ano, admitted yan na kukunti lang talaga ang BCNs namin. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so, with that, ma'am, we were able to address hindi man ganun ka bilis but comparable doon sa 2019 national and local elections mas mabilis tayo dito ngayon before it took us one day or 48 day, uh, hours para maibalik yung BCN oh, sa, sa para magbabat speed yeah. okay thank you very much although may reklamo naman sila na wala raw mga stipend that allowance yung nakatambay doon sa regional and provincial area Uh, yung ano ma'am, yung, yung regional repair hubs natin is uh, through Smartmatic sila ang nagpo-provide ng teams to do the repairs po. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Director Elna. Mupo ka na dyan. <laughs> balik ka ng balik eh. <laughs> Okay lang. Salamat ha. Oh, okay. I, uh, I think the uh, poll watching bodies will bear me out. Um, there was great hesitancy. Um, when the BCM malfunctioned, there was great hesitancy on the part of the voters um, to leave their filled up ballots with the electoral board. Diba ayo na ayo nila isa alang alang dun sa electoral board. And then, very often, there was no waiver form. And even if there's a waiver form, hindi pa natal yung kalooban nila na okay daw yun. Tama po ba yun? Uh, that's the complaint that uh, we received in this committee and that uh, they had to execute a waiver of their right to be issued a voter's receipt and uh, in certain cases they were not naman, uh, required to execute a waiver in other cases may nagsabi naman na pinipilit sila mag-wave na lang at iwanan na lang balota uh, meron ba kayong narinig na gano'n? tama ba yung uh, dinig namin? Pero, um, uh, excuse me meron po kaming narinig na gano'n at uh, pero hindi naman po ganong karami. Okay. Uh, bagamat uh, nangyari nga yun nung election day, uh, but uh, what is uh, 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 yung maganda dito na nangyari is uh, talagang nagtsaga not only the elect uh, electoral board members but also the watchers inside that precinct where those things happen. And uh, doon naman sa mga Uh, voters na nag, uh, nagtsaga pa rin na talagang ayaw nilang ibigay yung uh, kanilang mga balota uh, those things happened in fact uh, uh, one of the children of our trustee in PPCRB uh, also also did no uh, uh, yung ayaw niya talaga first time voter siya and then inantay niya talaga kahit na inabot ng napakahabang oras and uh, until such time na dumating yung ano yung uh, replacement BCM and then uh, the voting continues even umabot nga talaga sila ng ano no uh, ng this oras na ng gabi but uh, ayaw naman ayaw din naman talaga ng COMELEC na mangyari yon so those things uh, can really happen uh, especially kung meron nga talaga tayong mga old BCMs na nagamit. Hindi ko rin alam kung yung pangyayari na yon ay old BCM yung uh, nagamit. But uh, as what uh, Commissioner Garcia had mentioned, uh, he would be happy to uh, inform the body about uh, specific uh, 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 BCMs that were used from those uh, situations that happened. But uh, isa rin na ano na mai mai uh, babanggit ko rin dito uh, during the last steering committee uh, Commissioner Casquejo mentioned that uh, uh, yung mga ganong mga pangyayari uh, bibigyan yata ng additional allowances yung mga electoral board members na nag-serve that uh, that uh, uh, serve beyond beyond those ano no Uh, those uh, supposedly up to up to that time na kaya lang nila ibigay. So yung mga umabot talaga ng the following day 
In fact, meron pa nga nangyari na umabot ng two days. Uh, bibigyan yata sila ng, ano, ng allowance ng COMELEC uh, for those electoral board members who serve under those circumstances. So, yes, uh, to, to tell it honestly, nangyari nga po talaga yon. But uh, hindi naman po masyadong napakarami as compared to uh, the successful uh, turnout uh, of the normal functionality of BCMs in many precincts nationwide. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, perhaps uh, we need to clarify from Comelec. There was a great level of confusion about these waiver forms. Why did some electoral boards fail to require the uh, voters to execute a waiver? Um, there were complaints that a lot of electoral boards daw hindi pinaliwanag sa mga botante kung anong gagawin. The electoral boards also failed to explain to the voters that leaving their ballots was merely an option and not an absolute requirement because some voters complained that uh, they were forced to do so. And then uh, finally, there were also incidents where uh, uh, they had to leave the filled-in ballots and there was no uh, option to wait for the VCMs that were being replaced. Um, there are a number of complaints and uh, confusion regarding COMELEC policy with this regard. Yes, Commissioner Bulay? Yes, ma'am, with the kind permission. The resolution of the COMELEC completely addresses this problem, this concern. It's Commission Resolution 10759. Um, if I may. Oh, yes, I, we're familiar with the resolution, uh, Commissioner Bulay. The voters were given the option, di ba? Option talaga siya, to leave their filled up ballots with the electoral board, provided there's a waiver that they uh, execute of their right to get a voter's receipt. The, uh, the, the I think that was fairly clear, ka? Yes. Kaya yes. lang, yung execution nga nito, yung implementation, was not ganun clear. Ka ayos. Was not clear. That the second option stated in the said resolution was they can wait for the BCM to be repaired and then personally feed the ballot themselves. So, um, Many to, complaints kasi, uh, reached us basically saying that they weren't told that they had the option of waiting. They were forced to make a waiver or there were no waiver forms at all. So they wrote something that they weren't fully aware was uh, uh, legal and binding. Madam Chair, uh, this information has been uh, has reached our office, and then we cascaded the information to the different regions. It's a matter of the tackling how to get the information down the line from the regions all the way to the municipal levels. But uh, why, po? Is this the first time that we actually allow a waiver? I believe so. I think it's the first time because this is a new yes, resolution, is that correct? Yes, this so is So, hindi pa sana yung electoral board? Yes, ma'am. Parang yes, ganon? Yes. Is that uh, Director El Nas, uh, Director Sine Cruz, kayo yung mga haligi ng COMELEC? Ano ba? First time yata ito, di ba? No, 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 no ma'am. Uh, actually, mayroon na tayong, this is part of the contingency, uh, 2019 and 2022. Yes, ma'am. But uh, unfortunately, there is no form as far as the waiver is concerned. So, oh, so walang, walang pipil apan yung botante, but... Ah, walang klarong form? Yes, ma'am. Anong 2019 or 2022? Wala, uh, both, ano ma'am, uh, 2022 and 2019. Kasi yung ibang but, botante, nagre-reklamo, no? pinapirma daw sila ng mga papel na hindi naman nila yeah. maintindihan kung tama ba yun, kasi parang sulat-sulat lang. Y yes po, ma'am, tama yan. Ah... Uh, Nasa rules na ilagay sa minutes, uh, the voters will be informed on the situation. Then they will be given the option either to wait or to just waive the right to feed the ballot into the VCM. But all of these things will be incorporated or indicated in the minutes of voting uh, para ma-reflect kung sino ito, ilan ito, anong oras ito nangyari. And there is that uh, manifesta uh, manifestation or express waiver on the part of the voter na iwanan na lang nila para yung board ang mag as soon as maayos. Yes, but na yung director, BCM. that's the paperwork of the COMELEC. 
Pero paano naman yung botante, di ba? Wala naman siyang kumpiyansa. Pag iniwan lang niya nakakalat dyan na kung ano pinapirma sa kanya, syempre hindi siya kontento, no? So, I think uh, um, it's uh, necessary that uh, we take some uh, remedial measures, some solutions, solve na natin to moving forward. Um, should we categorize as election offenses? Failing to require the voter to execute a waiver, failure to properly brief the voter, coercing or forcing the voter in some way to simply leave, leave his field in ballot. Is that something that we should do? I, I, I don't know. Actually, uh, Madam Chair, if I may, we, we'll, we will readily admit that indeed there were no forms. Okay. Waiver. So, so that's step one, siguro. Gumawa ng form na napakasimple, yes, na available. Pero ipaliwanag rin sa botante na hindi naman niya kailangan gawin yun. Pwede rin siya maghintay. And that can be included as one of the election offenses uh, on or later on. Later can, on, pwede rin siyang i-include as a minor election offense. Yes, Your Honor. Including right. the election officer, clearly. Or the electoral board member. Or the board or, member. Yes, Your Honor. Sure. Were there incidents of actual coercion enforcing? Because there were rumors of such, but I never uh, verified. We, we have no uh, formal complaints on record, Your Honor, as far as uh, coercion in the precinct level are concerned. Simply because the electoral board members cannot just coerce. They, they will be reported by the observers of the PPCRB of NAMFEL or even by the watchers, and their names will be included in the minutes. Kasi sa online at saka sa radyo, may narinig ako may ganon. Pero wala naman talagang nag-blotter nag or nagkaso. Meron ba kayong alam? Well, well uh, meron din kasi kaming call center uh, na sinet up dun sa UST Quadricentennial Pavilion. So, we verified on this uh, particular situation. But it turned out, uh, according naman dun sa aming watcher doon, uh, pinapakiusapan, hindi naman talaga pinipilit. Pinapakiusapan sila, sinasabi sa kanila yung uh, baka mag-aantay kayo na matagal, uh, baka, uh, baka hindi, hindi agad ito ma-repair ma o mapalitan. So, uh, siguro, uh, dahil sa mahaba na rin silang pumila, Opo. tapos pagdating doon sa kanilang ano pagsubo ng balota sa BCM eh nagkaroon ng pagpalya so syempre yung mga emotions na ganun uh, will uh, turn out na hindi nagkaroon ng uh, pagkakaintindihan but i but i always presume na yung yung ating electoral board members were properly trained and also be ano uh, uh, be able to handle those kind of situations kasi okay. mga teacher sila eh. So I presume na siguro baka yung sa kainitan ng ano ng pangyayari. Opo. Meron 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 pwedeng mangyari na ganyan. Na, naririnig ko kasi sa probinsya, di ba? Pag nagpalya yung BCM, talagang dumadami yung tao, di ba? Nagiiintayan doon. Tapos siksikan, tapos hindi malaman kung ano gagawin. Siyempre, yung electoral board sasabihin sa kanila, pumirma na lang kayo, iwanan na lang ninyo kasi talagang tambak na yung tao, nag, uh, nag, uh, napupuno yung lugar. And many places, masikip talaga to begin with. Uh, and given the COVID protocols, you really want them to uh, um, leave the premises as quickly as possible so the next batch can come in. So, eto siguro ang kailangan i-address natin. Mas klaro, na may option at kung saan magiintay kasi kung magiintay rin lang doon eh talagang uh, nagkakaipitan na sila yes mr averia please good morning madam chair good morning to the commissioners um we confirmed the observations no but uh, we don't have any observation on the coercion uh yung nagsisiksikan when the time of BCN actually does not did not happen only in the provinces I myself I've observed I observed it in Pasay Pasay City West High School no? because that's where I voted early in the morning mga 7 7 in the morning nasira yung isang BCN nagkumpula na yung mga yeah. voters no? so nagkakainitan I think uh, based on our observation it goes into uh, the electoral board training on how, how to handle situations like those there are even reports, for example, at the end of the day, no, na sinabi, pinalitan yung SD card. Hindi na-explain ng electoral board na yung gagamitin niya ay yung dongle for transmission. 
So may mga nagre-reklamo, pinulitan daw yung SD card. So, again, it goes into that we should improve the training of our electoral board members so moving forward. No? De, siguro yung DICT, kailangan rin tumulong na i- uh, palaganap yung mga balitang ganyan na yung SD card pwede paltan all these things that can happen siguro magpatulong na yung COMELEC na yung website ninyo na now you see it, now you don't ipermi na natin kasi problema rin yung information eh natataram tayong publiko pag nakikita yung mga SD card yung mga BCM nakakagulo syempre nininerdos na lahat Mad Madam Chair Yes, Director Elna uh, by the way, ma'am, no? uh, gusto ko lang pasalamatan din yung ano, uh, in behalf sa COMELEC, ang DICT and DOST, they were able to field 85, uh, on the, uh, they were able to field 85 technical hubs, provincial hubs, uh, the purpose of which is to address problems on SD cards, kasi dalawa ito, ma'am, eh. Defective yung BCM. BCM nakita ko uh, ah. sa lahat ng region sa province. Pero Ma yung technical hubs pa sa SD, Ma hirap kami. Ma may mayroon kami dyan, ma'am. It's situated at the office of the provincial election supervisor. Wala. It's, it's... Hindi SD card. Wala silang capacity. Ang capacity lang nila BCM. Eh. Yun ang balita ko sa iba't ibang probinsya. Hindi po, ma'am. Uh, yung DOST at saka di, ano, hindi ko melek ag nang maman dito. Instead, DOST and... Uh, Perhaps it's a lack of information because yeah, hindi na ako, Melek. Yes, ma'am. Um, in fact, uh, we invited also watchers to observe the process of replacing the defective SD card from the precincts. Dinadala nila sa Office of the Provincial Election Supervisor para maghintay ng instructions from the uh, Santa Rosa Warehouse right. paano i- palitan itong mga SD cards na ito. Yes, but I recall that a lot of uh, provincial uh, election officers, for example, were very, very nervous of their SD cards um, malfunctioning because they had simply no way to replace or repair them except to send them to Santa Rosa. Parang miski yung election officer hindi yata aware na merong uh, technical hubs na pwede sa SD card. Ang alam lang nila yung VCM. That, that's in 2019 po na dinadala dito. Now, ma'am, uh, Pero I think there's a... That may be so, but I believe there's a lack of information kasi mismo yung mga COMELEC sa probinsya, hindi nila alam na pwede pala eh. Parating sinasabi, at saka, actually nakakatuwa yung mga COMELEC eh. Nagsisirani ko sila ng sirili nila ng BCM eh. Pero yung SD cards, nervous na nervous sila doon. That, that, that's the precise reason why uh, we established provincial technical hubs to address this, ma'am. Uh, yes, that's right. Well, all yung... I'm saying is that not everyone was aware that they existed. Even election officers were uh, either ignorant or hesitant to uh, access them. We, we, will, we will include that, ma'am, in our assessment and evaluation, ma'am. Bago kasi, ito. di ba? Wala naman yan noong 2019. Yes, po, Santa Rosa um, mayroon yan, ma'am, pero ano lang, dito lang sa Santa Rosa. Yeah, talagang kaya, kaya nga. Okay, so we need to require a form for these waivers. We should print them and then uh, find other ways to sanction. Um, and most of all, as Mr. Averia said, we really need to train everyone very uh, well. And finally, we need to communicate both to the public as well as to the different provinces and the uh, COMELEC offices in Ipuba. So, I think uh, we move on to another report, uh, and that is that the voter receipts did not match the actual votes cast. I think this caused great hysteria among the OFW, for example. Uh, I uh, received so many uh, reports of this. How many reports actually reached the COMELEC? Madam Chair, there was only one report. It was in Ilocos. I believe that happened. Uh, it was reported in one precinct by... Yeah, I think there were quite a few, as a matter of fact, from the OFW. Yeah, yes, uh, Madam Chair, but we, uh, we received only one uh, report really? allegedly from a, um, a municipality in, uh, in Ilocos. And we re-verify and we counter-check. Uh, but uh, we, it's actually a fake, uh, fake news, oh. actually. Uh, it was even investigated by one of the local candidates there, 
Uh, I think it's in your Bakan, uh, Ilocos. Bakara. Ah, no, Bakan, no, Bakan, Ilocos. Bakan, okay. yeah, Ilocos. And uh, we, the, the voter was saying that uh, he voted for this candidate and yeah. allegedly the receipt uh, as produced by the machine does not tally with uh, what he, he voted in the ballot. So, but I believe there were other incidents reported, Commissioner George, in the OFW. For example, yes. uh, in a previous hearing, somebody told us uh, from the DFA that said report was in fact included in the minutes of Singapore, for example, and other places where they were not contained in the report but had been uh, alleged. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, we can, we can ask our... Uh, the director for overseas voting, Director Bea uh, Losada, so that uh, she can confirm. Na ganun eh, noon. And uh, somewhere actually recorded, yung iba naman, parang nagkamali lang or uh, they did not uh, record it anymore. Yes, uh, please. With the indulgence of the Honorable Chairman and Commissioners, uh, Your Honor, uh, with respect to uh, reports of the VVPAT or the voter receipt not matching the ballots. Um, when we asked the various foreign service post about cert said reports, um, it's either the overseas voters themselves would not formalize the protest, so in which case, hindi na po siya, uh, wala na pong documentation. Because when the SBI would clarify the matter, yeah, I'm sorry, I think I recall that uh, that wasn't the explanation. Perhaps that's the explanation in certain cases, but the case that was brought to us in the hearing involved a Singapore vote, yes. at may sinasabi yung DFA na dikit-dikit yung balota or something, yung lumabas, yung, uh, yung nauna, dumikit dun sa papel niya or some, something to that effect. At yung nakuha niyang resibo, yung nakaraan, something to that effect. Tama po ba yun? So the, uh, I don't think it was an issue of the failure of uh, the voter to report or record such, but rather there was something to do mechanically. Uh, it was, uh, I think, I believe that the explanation of the ambassador to Singapore was that when uh, the ballot was distributed to a voter, they inadvertently gave two ballots na magkatikit. Yeah. That's correct. That's the yes. incident I referred to. And then the voter, instead of returning the other one, uh, they, he or she filled out both ballots and returned it. So uh -huh. the second ballot that was filled out was not marked as spoiled right away. By yes, the we're SBI. talking about the same incident. Did you have other reports aside from that, uh, which was already taken up in the previous hearing in any case? Yes. Um, aside from that, uh, Your Honor, in other posts like in Hong Kong where there were uh, incidents reported about the ballots not matching their voter receipt, uh, when we asked the SBIs at post about it, it's either that the voter themselves uh, do not quite recall if they shaded it fully, in which case then it would not be red because of the 25% uh, shading. I'm sorry, I'm not understanding. We are now blaming the voter no, no. for the receipt? When, we, uh, when the SBIs clarified with the voter about whether or not it was reflected, the voters themselves were unsure, hence they did not formalize the complaint anymore. So, there were so in like short, that. how many reported incidents of uh, mismatch between receipts and actual votes we did you received, whether DFA or COMELEC? We have not yet received the totality of the daily reports from the post, uh, Your Honor, as they are still in transit to the finish. But that's an admission that there are, in fact, reports. There it's not true, uh, as you previously stated, that uh, the voters were no longer interested or failed to report. Uh, it's true that there were reports uh, of mismatch, but there were also instances were in the okay. backed out of reporting. Sure. What's the protocol for the electoral board in uh, the event that there are these reported incidents? What's the electoral board supposed to do? Pag sinabi na mismatch yung resibo, they will have to record that to the minutes. They will have to minutes. record it in the minutes. Yes. Uh -oh. as, as they did in several uh, embassies, di ba? Tama? So thank you, Director Losada. Uh oh Yeah. So wait, Director Losada, don't go away. Um, Hihingi na lang kami ng kopya pag nabuo yung mga report na galing sa iba't ibang bansa. Or even locally, I'm sure there are some complaints not only from Narbakan Ilocosur. 
Yes, Your Honor. We will compile it uh, from all of the posts. Ah, overseas voting kasi yun ang hawak nyo, no? Opo. Pero yung domestic, baka meron din para ipagkaisa natin. What's the reason such would happen? May, may binanggit na natin yung dumikit o dalawa yung balota na nakuha. Uh, what else could happen? Why is that occurring? For, for overseas, Your Honor? Well, for, for this mismatch of the receipt. to verify at this uh, point, Your Honor, but when asked for the reports of the SBIs at the overseas uh, voting post, when they conduct an interview with the voter, uh, minsan po hindi nang kakaintindihan sa instructions. Hindi na? Kakaintindihan po. So, hindi po nila imbes na i-fully shade, uh, partial shade, so minsan po under vote po yung lumalabas dahil hindi po nila kinompleto, let's say yung sa senatorial slate, or um, uh, yun yung most, um, yeah, most but frequently... I think the OFW are very, very knowledgeable. Uh, in any case, Your Honors, we will compile okay. uh, as, um, as requested by this Honorable Committee all the uh, all such incidents as noted po in the minutes of voting of the post. Okay, if you could just give us a copy for overseas voting and uh, for the local and we try to understand why this sort of thing occurs. Is there a necessity for an amendment of the law short of a full hybrid system allowing for automatic manual recount kapag may mismatch? Are there any other uh, um, solutions that we can propose? If the mismatches reach a certain level, Dapat may automatic uh, manual recount, tama ba yun? Or are we jumping the gun and uh, there aren't that many incidents anyway? Tama po kayo ma'am, wala naman pong uh, talagang uh, credible uh, incident na verified. Number one, number two, it will really unduly delay based on my experience as a former practitioner. It will really unduly delay kasi po ang gagawin ng, ng lahat ng mga kandidato ay eh, magkocomplain lang na nag, nag mismatch. Oh, uh, sa, sa, na reklamo na lang yan ang hindi na po tayo makakatapos sa pagbilang sa, sa gabi and so the only solution perhaps is to file an election protest and let's recount the ballots and maybe tama po kayo hahaba yung p -p proseso but well, then, uh, there's that there's also the proposal pending uh, in the Senate for a hybrid okay. system where you have an automatically uh, manual count at the precinct level that's the other way I suppose Pero matagal din yun, but not as long as what uh, you are uh, uh, projecting. That's right, uh, Madam Chair. Sige. Okay. Uh, perhaps you can advise us, uh, because there are perennially complaints that the receipts don't um, match. Although, as you said, Director Sonia, minsan, uh, pag pinaliwanag, hindi naman pala um, nagkamali. Okay. Um, perhaps I can um, derive from you any suggestions on the pending hybrid because that's the more uh, practical solution um, than uh, the automatic manual recount kasi abutin nga tayo ng sham sham dun maybe uh, Comelec Legal could comment on the hybrid so we see um, given the last experience how it would, it would apply and if it would actually help or simply delay the process sige po Next is the absence of observers in data centers, regional and provincial hubs, and the National Tech Support Center, uh, CMAC, on election day. Bakit sabi wala ng observer? Tama ba ito? Um, Comelec did not heed the call for placing observers in data centers, regional and provincial hubs. So there were blind spots once again in transparency, is that correct? Yes, Commissioner Bulay, are uh, you uh, going to respond? Yes, Madam Chair. Um, I believe we have addressed that problem by a commission resolution asking the parties, coalitions and all, to provide watchers, maximum of two. In fact, there's three regions, I believe, that complied with it but uh, some did not. So I think, uh, but we have the citizens armed there. We also had a walkthrough and uh, 
we, it was live streamed. So I think Comila complied with that mandate. Madam. Yes, I think we complied substantially, but perhaps there's room for improvement because it appears that uh, since it was not mandatory for COMELEC to allow observers, the constant complaint is that the IRR was not yet promulgated, so the guidelines could not be imposed, and then uh, the law did not designate a particular COMELEC officer to submit for approval on bank the uh, rules for observers and watchers on or before a specific date, the usual rigmarole of uh, uh, this sort of thing. So is there something we can do about that? Para mas claro, mas mabilis. Kasi laging problema yan, di ba? Nagumpisa tayo dyan, di ba? Sa ballot printing. Tapos sa configuration ng SD cards, hindi pinapapasok sa aquarium. Di ba yun ang issue natin, Hubert? Tapos si Alex Ramos, di ba? Pinalayas pa yung tropa niya. So, I mean to say, it started like that, eh. Tapos tuloy-tuloy, eh, di ba? Parating reason, may COVID, yung IRR wala pa, hindi naman mandatory sa COMELEC. Ano pa ang tingin ninyo para wala na tayong uh, reklamong ganyan? Madam Chair, uh, with your kind permission, uh, if we will still be there in the Commission, ang isang solution po is the codification of all our rules and regulation. What do you mean by that? That not in on, on, all election, lagi ka nila magpapasa ng bawat resolution. Pare-parehas naman po yung subject matter. So ibig ko sabihin, for example, uh, Madam Chair, on the accreditation of majority minority party. Why do you have to pass every now and then, every election, a resolution on the accreditation of majority minority party? And pare -pare naman yun. Pero pare parehas puro yung criteria, pare parehas yung requirement. Meaning, one resolution, you you just change the date of the, the change the date of the the deadline for the, the uh, petition, number one. Number two, in the case of accreditation, you pass a resolution uh, that will be applicable not only for this election, but in the future. Like, for example, what are the the places where there will be watchers and observers, what are the qualifications for the watchers and observers from the, the data centers to the, the technical hubs to the repair hubs. So everything will be transparent. So that's the thing. Because it's hard to apply to the NPO. Tapos panibagong accreditation na naman sa regional and provincial hub. Tapos panibago na naman sa poll watcher. Ang gulo, ang dami-daming accreditation, katakot-takot eh. That's hassle for you, hassle for the parties also. That's hassle for everyone. That, that's right, uh, Your Honor. That's why we will have to pass now a, a, a gu the guidelines that will be applicable not only at the present but likewise for the future. And if there, there are changes, yung change lang po, uh, minor na lang, and we will not pass... Kasi po ang hirap ni mag-track ng ganun kahit sa isang practitioner, Madam Chair. You have COMELEC Resolution 10730 before it was COMELEC Resolution involving the same subject matter. That's correct, yes. Um, actually, I've um, embarked on a rather ambitious project and that's the new Omnibus Election Code of 2022. Kasi yung dati, yung 1981. Ang tapang ko, may draft na po ako. Kaya lang medyo chapsui pa, pero bahala na, file na. Tagal ng COMELEC eh. Madam Chair, can Sorry, I... Commissioner Bulay, please. Well, yeah, I'm so happy to hear that. Uh, maybe... And Diane, you're trabaho na. Maybe, Your Honor... Effort na effort yan. <laughs> ...would like to include also the uh, maximization of the party receipts. The maximization? Yes, right. because... Uh, um, we, we start because of petitions that uh, came to our office suggesting... Uh, computations for the third round of seats, which unfortunately is not provided in Republic Act 7941 nor in the Constitution. So basically what... Or any jurisprudence so far. Correct, Your Honor. And, but so far, um, with all respect and reverence, what was promulgated by the Supreme Court in Banat versus Comelec has been applied in 2010, 2013, 2016, and 2019, and also 2022. That's right. So basically, um, uh, though it's not a popular opinion, but I join the outgoing president in saying yeah. that the party list law needs to be improved. I hope. Madam Chair, as the Chairman of the Electoral Reforms Committee and People's Participation would spearhead the law.
the committee secretary will bear me out. I actually filed a committee report amending the party list law uh, to that effect uh, with a similar sense that uh, it causes more confusion and upset than uh, clarity. So, meron coming committee report. And if I could, the committee secretary, if you could uh, provide it to the COMELEC, I'm sure you can improve on it. It's uh, not brilliant, but it was the best uh, compromise we could come to. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, thank you. Is there room for criminalizing willful refusal of any COMELEC official to admit observers who are, compl who are compliant with the guidelines? Ayan, oh. Sumasang-ayo ng NAMFEL, oh. May init ang ulo ng mga yan eh, nung umpisa pa eh. Ikikriminalize na ba natin yung pagbabawal ng komile? Baka pwede administrative lang po muna, Madam Chair. <laughs> so talaga, it's just a slap on the wrist. High blood na kasi mga tao dito. Okay. All right. Yes, Mr. Averia. Yeah, that's, that's part of our observation report. Uh, some of the electoral boards failed to recognize the accredited citizens' arms. Also, some electoral boards uh, refused to release a copy of the ERs to some watchers. Yes, have you uh, put these observations and complaints in uh, on paper? Uh, our initial assessment of the elections, I think we emailed it to the Secretariat. Yes, because uh, I recall reading we'll, something to that effect yes, already. But we'll, we'll, we're, under our terms of accreditation by the COMELEC, we are required to file a full report by uh, a report by June 8 or June 9. So we're composing, we're putting together the reports for the COMELEC. Okay. Although uh, that report will not yet be complete because we are also uh, tasked with the random annual audit, which will end on June 21 yet. No. I see. So it's going to be a, a preliminary report to the COMELEC. Okay. But the preliminary report as well, uh, the preliminary to the preliminary, the one that you submitted to uh, the committee, uh, indicates that uh, you really had trouble with ag accreditation from day one to actual uh, count. Um, we received our accreditation February 2, you know, so, and, and we filed the accreditation petition, uh, I think, in October. Uh oh. No. So, Tagal nga eh, di ba? Yeah. So, well, Pero, of course, the excuse was COVID, isn't uh, it? Yes. At least at the very beginning. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're hoping that the process could improve. Uh, uh -oh. no? uh, so we're looking forward to a more improved process. But certainly a more streamlined process is in order. Because yeah. hindi naman pwede hingi ng hingi ng accreditation. As we said earlier, it uh, makes life difficult for all parties. Hindi lang naman yung poll watcher, kundi lahat talaga eh, including Comelec. Okay, uh, I think in Metro Manila and in the uh, Metro, Cebu and Davao areas, there was a great deal of unhappiness about overcrowding in polling places, uh, four to five hour waits and so on. What happened? As you said earlier, we had a record turnout. So everybody wanted to vote. We had a great number of first time voters. Um, are there any solutions to this, um, given that there are COVID protocols that were supposed to be in place? Uh, what can we do? Walang social distancing. Obvious na obvious nung May 9, talagang dikit-dikit na yung mga tao, pila-pila. Talaga pong na-overwhelm kasi, Madam Chair. In, try to imagine, Madam Chair, in one uh, school, uh, Five o'clock pa lang, six o'clock ang opening. Tatlong kanto na po yung haba ng pila ng mga putante natin. And so, at, but then, we are lucky enough that we have our emergency accessible polling place. And we have our uh, uh, IPP, isolation polling precinct. Madami naman pong gumamit din, in all fairness, dito oh. sa mga precincts na to. Especially Kaya lang, yung, sobrang dami talaga ng tao at saka sobrang liit ng lugar. Ganun lang kasimple yun, that, that's, that's right, Madam Chair. So, um, should we consider, as it was discussed in the past, the feasibility of holding voting in urban centers, in shopping centers, similar establishments? Is that a possibility? I mean, assuming that we can uh, regulate and impose the security measures uh, required? Madam Chair, 
Number one is early voting for senior citizen and PWDs. Yes, that's another uh, measure pending uh, this committee. We've reported it out. However, uh, it has not been passed. Early voting for elderly, PWD, pregnant, etc. And uh, even IPs in remote areas, diba? Yung early voting to be uh, expanded and actually rationalized. Kasi once again, ibang, iba, iba, ibang batas rin ang, ang nagsasaad nun eh. Okay, so itong shopping centers and similar establishment, parang there's, the, people are saying that perhaps these are bigger, they have more space. Pwede ba yun? Is there a limitation on uh, location of precincts? Uh, Do they have to be public spaces? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, we can use uh, private spaces, but uh, the um, most important thing to consider is the accessibility of that voting center. Uh, that's precisely what they're saying, that in uh, very many cases, the shopping centers, for example, uh, and similar establishments are far more accessible than some of the school buildings that you chose. Yes, ma'am, but if you are going to use a lot of uh, <coughs> uh, shopping centers, you will have uh, a lot of voters who are living outside, or residing uh, far away from the, voting, from, the, from the malls. So they, would take a, they will have to take a ride, Yung, yung centralization, yung central, yung yeah, location. we're not saying that we're going to wind down all the precincts. We're just saying that dagdagan. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think really the key is to, Kasi, uh, to have more voting centers. No, because shopping ready. centers, for example, are planned so that they have intermodal transport. So it's much easier to get to them than a far-flung uh, precinct in a school building that no one's quite sure it's located in uh, which barangay, di ba? Yes, ma'am, but then we have to also, also consider to factor in yung accessibility ng votante papuntang voting center sa so, sa malls. If the voters is... Hindi, malalapit uh, lang sa mall. Ah, yes, ma'am, ganun lang. Mas malalapit Kasi sa mall. Kasi nga, mas kompleto yung transport dun sa mall. Yun ang suggestion sa Metro Manila. Kasi sa Quezon City, yung pilahan, grabe. Yeah. Manila, dikit-dikit ang barangay. Tapos one voting center will cater to several barangays na kami. Okay. Siguro nga, Madam Any Chair, yung there? biometrics technology natin na naudlot. Kasi po, if, for example, we will be using biometrics technology, kung nakaboto na po yung votante, you have the right, you have to, you can choose whether to vote in your particular precinct or to vote in the mall, and then pag nakaboto ka na sa mall using biometrics, uh, and then nakaboto ka na, mamomonitor na doon sa presinto na hindi ka na pwedeng bumoto kasi you already casted your, your vote in the, in the mall. Pero so, nakaka-nervous uh, yata yung ganun. Sigurado magdoble-doble yan. We, we already adopted sa uh, Madam Chair sa ating overseas voting yung vote anywhere uh, uh, policy uh, vote natin. Anywhere policy, yeah. And uh, naging successful tayo po dahil umabot ng kahit paano 39% yeah. yung ating Considering voters. Considering how many were repatriated and then deployed again and so on and so forth. Oo, tama. Uh, pero parang mas mataas ang tiwala natin sa abroad kesa dito. <laughs> okay, so um, another issue that was raised was the lack of transparency in transmission. Sabi nila, it was fast, it was free from glitches unlike previous elections like 2019, 2016. What did Comelec do differently this time, enabling, again, this uh, uh, very quick transmission. Yeah. I mean, uh, we have, of course, Your the Honor. issue of speed versus credence, no? Your, yes, please. Your Honor. Director Elna. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, yung success natin in the speedy, trans, uh, fast transmission of results, hindi natin yan nakuha, Your Honor, isang gabi. Mahabang proseso yan, maraming testing ang dinaanan ng COMELEC in order to attain fast transmission of results. As early as December, we started already the transmission readiness test. Ito po yung testing natin ng mga VCMs and CCS kung gagana ba itong mga VCM and CCS paggamitan ng dangle, paggamitan ng globe, smart, Sun, etc. So ang sinasabi mo, kahit pa paano, gumagaling na rin tayo. Yes, Bob, ma'am. At saka medyo not, maayos na rin yung mga wifi kahit paano. Yes, ma'am. Uh, not only that... Saka yung telcos natin, nandito yata Smartmatic and Globe, kahit pa paano nag-improve, ano? Yes, ma'am. Not only that, 
uh, after the transmission readiness test, we conducted field test. Uh, selected areas, again, tinitesting natin yung connectivity, yung strength, at saka yung capability ng BCM na mag-transmit ng data from okay. the BCM to uh, the CCS hanggang sa national board. Also, we conducted mock elections using uh, itong mga transmission media na ito. Yes, but this is uh, in the usual order of business. We're talking strictly about transmission, electronic transmission. Perhaps the CIACC, the ICT and our IT consultants, um, what can you say about uh, what some have called the inordinate speed of transmission? Is it in fact inordinate and inexplicable or tama lang? Okay. Yes, Attorney uh, Guevara, please. Yes, uh, or anyone um, involved in the IT sector. Director Elnas, yung mga IT muna pagbigyan natin. Ah. Silang, sila yung uh, makaka-explain nito eh. Bakit nga daw ang bilis? Totoo ba? Hindi. Yun. Maybe, but I'm sure we can defer first to uh, okay. our... Okay. Uh, uh, you said Castro muna daw. Ladies first. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, actually, the DICT was involved... Sorry. No, I, I just speak up. That's all. Yes. The DICT was involved with the COMELEC through the CAC, the COMELEC Advisory Committee, and then, before the elections, we have been meeting, planning out to conduct some stress tests, especially um, uh, simulating, for example, for tra the transmission of uh, the results. Because I believe in the 2019 elections, that was the problem wherein um, when the election returns came in at the same time, and then, um, yeah, then the, the system was down for several hours. So, um, with the COMELEC Advisory Committee, meeting with the COMELEC also, we plan these activities in order to avoid that uh, same predicament from happening. So, that's one of the factors. Plus, of course, um, uh, the, the, the uh, Wi-Fi and then the, um, the transmission has been improved a lot. And some of the items, like for example, in areas that there were no connectivity, I believe the COMELEC deployed some uh, um, connectivity through big guns so that that will be transmitted uh, immediately, unlike what happened before in the past elections. I guess the perception is that uh, because they were expecting maybe the same kind of uh, um, uh, performance which would happen in the 2019 when then there were some really um, um, like uh, delay in the transmission so this time right I think uh, we were able to prepare yes it. we've experienced six hour glitches seven hour glitches in the past right yeah. um, I suppose it's no secret that former officers of the DICT cast doubt on the speed and the 47 percent multiplier uh, repeatedly over uh, um, over social media as well as traditional media. Do we have any response to uh, those queries? Um, well, that's in terms of the speed for the telcos. But for the DICT also, we were also conducting VAPT tests in terms of uh, so that there are no bugs in the system that right. are in, in common. So like Director Elna said, you tested and retested this system unlike uh, yes. in the past. So yes. that these allegations uh, over the media are uh, misplaced. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am, that's true. We also prepared some cybersecurity measures in order to ensure that um, all the, I mean, the websites and the servers are functioning well. In fact, the DICT uh, was able to block some attempts in that. And in to, some, to some matters, there's this, uh, w w when those incidents are, are happening, there's some denial of service, but this didn't happen in these elections. I see. Um, perhaps you can uh, give us a uh, quick memo regarding the cybersecurity measures that were finally put in place, because I remember in previous hearings, 
the other senators were very uh, doubtful about uh, the uh, cyber security of our electoral process from end to end. So, siguro maganda kung malaman kung ano ang nagawa natin, ano pang magagawa in the future. I think uh, Attorney Guevara, Attorney Lim, Attorney Uy, um, paano natin sasagutin na bakit daw ang bilis at ano ba yung mga paulit-ulit na 47%, yung iba pang hinala na um, masyado raw mabilis. Tama ba yun? Yes, Attorney yeah, Lim, please. Permit. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, on the part of Smartmatic, we felt that the improvements in the software of the VTM, as well as in terms of the data package handling, uh, uh, also increased no, the transmission rate. No? Uh, second also, the improved uh, software for the transmission router, which was subject of the source code review, also uh, made the transmission more efficient. And of course, the ever-improving uh, telecom infrastructure in the Philippines uh, by the telecom providers, by the ICT, this also improved. Uh, second, with respect to the 47% allegation, uh, although commonly used, uh, the law of large, large numbers is that it provides that if you get a sample from at random, and it's so many, it's a sample that comes from varied, uh, it, that sample becomes closer to what is the actual uh, situation reality. When the transmission started um, coming in, it was coming from everywhere, Your Honor. Everywhere, at all areas in the Philippines, it was so random that the results uh, coming in were now reflecting what was the actual reality of the results of the elections, Your Honor. But if you look at it on a per-province basis or a per-city or municipality basis, you can see that there's, there's no 47% trend. Uh, for seven, if you aggregate the uh, entire thing, then that's when you fall into the law of large numbers, Your Honor. Is there anyone who'd like to add anything to that allegation, please? And the explanation of Attorney Lim. <laughs> um, thank you, Madam Chair. Actually, um, one of the main difference um, between the previous elections and this election is that the source code reviewers were allowed this time to do a source code review of the transmission server, the transmission um, system. No? So, um, by allowing that review, the source code reviewers were able to clarify a lot of issues um, that has been uh, bugging them um, for so many elections in the past. And uh, we were also able to provide uh, suggestions on how um, to improve um, on the transmission given that we now could see um, how the transmission server actually operated. So um, with that, I, I'd really like to commend the Comelec for being um, able to provide that access this time to the source code reviewers. So I think that is a great improvement um, um, from all previous elections. Um, so, so that uh, with respect to the law of large numbers, I'm not a mathematician, so I, I wouldn't know how to explain that. But I think um, Commissioner Botlin was able to explain it already. Uh, Hubert. Yes, Hubert. Anything else you'd like to add um, to the speed versus credence theory? Uh, well, first of all, uh, uh, I'd like, again, uh, as mentioned by um, uh, uh, Ivan, uh, Ivan, Ivan, I'd like to commend the COMELEC no, uh, for the speed no, uh, and even the credence of the elections. No. Uh, for the first time, no, we in a in a, tech, in a in a hearing like this or in a in a Senate hearing like this, I am not gonna raise any issue on the translation. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I've raised it many times in numerous technical working groups, numerous Senate hearings or congressional inquiries. But this time around, I'm not going to raise it anymore because I'm quite happy uh, with what that happened in the last elections. I'd like again to take my hat off to the Covalent. Um, of course, no, as I mentioned to Commissioner Casquillo during the canvassing, uh, there are certain things that we need to still improve on, uh, and primarily uh, to address the issue of transparency. While um, the, the previous elections, we could safely say that there were a lot of reforms that were instituted based on what we have recommended, uh, there are certain still some items that we need to um, 
uh, further uh, clearly look at and to address the issue of transparency. And one of which I think is the issue on ensuring that the election return should be posted on the common public website. Uh, this would, um, even the election returns are actually source documents that um, anyone can take a look at even before the transmission. So if you can just post the ERs on the public website or public website, then it will, in a sense, level the playing field. Yeah. Why? Primarily because for you to be able to get an ER on election day, based on my computation, you would have to spend 1,000 pesos per watcher. Yeah. That would include the lunch, breakfast, dinner, transportation, including load. But yeah. if you post it on the website, then I guess that will um, level the playing field. Those who don't have the budget would be able just to open the website and make their own tabulation. Yes, Hubert. I was actually going to uh, comment that that would be the remedial measure in this case. Um, and it would help, as you said, with the, the perennial problem of providing copies of the, CO, of the ERs and uh, the uh, usual issue of delay. Perhaps, once again, the uh, solution lies with the Comelec website to post the source documents or the ERs on the website so that they're generated before transmission. People can go right back to them and counter check as they wish so that they're readily available. And this reduces doubts on the accuracy of the transmission, no matter how fast or how slow, or in globs of 47% in big numbers or uh, in separate uh, batches. So that was the suggestion, Sana, as a remedial measure. Madam Chair, yes, uh, Commissioner uh, Garcia. Madam Chair, just for the record, uh, uh -huh. so that uh, this will be uh, recorded in the annual of uh, the history of this committee. As far as the transmission of uh, result is concerned, and at the same time comparing the election returns as based on the findings of the PPCRB, we were able to, f to determine 99.94% as far as the PPCRB is concerned. Uh, the, the accuracy of the transmission as well as comparing it with the physical copy of the election returns. For the, our initial uh, findings in the random manual audit, for president it's 99.97%. For vice president it's 99.94%. From president down to the last council it's 99.94%. So that is how accurate the, the transmission of the results versus the, ele the physical copy of the election returns is. Yes, we're aware of that, uh, Commissioner Garcia, but uh, for the offices contested that you mentioned, the majorities were so overwhelming. In certain local contests, kung saan manipis na manipis talaga yung agwat, maraming nagtanong. At maganda siguro, ipost na lang yung source documents para lahat makakita at bilangin nila ng sarili nila para panatag ang kalooban ng lahat ng kandidato at ng butante. Uh, it's posted already. In fact, I already bibled it to Tony Hubert Guevara before. Parang kulang-kulang, <coughs> hindi siya kompleto. Uh, but uh, in fact, they're generated before transmission, so we could really upload them very, very quickly para wala nang ganun. Okay, I think uh, we get to the point of canvassing and the chain of custody and the handling of the COCs. Um, why were there so many missing contents, delayed delivery, and so on? They were not in the ballot boxes delivered to Congress, uh, as I recall, Surigao del uh, Sur, uh, Pampanga, Sultan Kudarat, Mandaluyong, ang lapit nga, Menila, ang lapit nga, Cagayan de Oro, Sulu. So the chain of custody was what worried all of us in uh, the Hall of Congress uh, in the two days of canvassing um, because it affected naturally the credibility, authenticity, and confidence in the uh, results. Um, May uh, we know what actually happened? Because the, in many cases, the provincial election supervisor <coughs> and the city election officer were not able to explain what happened adequately. Uh, when this uh, matter was presented uh, to our attention, we were busy canvassing for the uh, uh, party list uh, representatives at the PICC. But nonetheless, we had uh, a team uh, represented by Dida, Helen Aguila Flores, Director Lusada, Attorney June Anga, and ITD Philemon in really the third at the NBOC in Congress. And they were able to address this problem by requiring the provincial election supervisor concerned 
to uh, uh, send via Viber uh, a scanned copy of the uh, COC and uh, authenticated by this provincial election supervisor. When this was presented to me, I immediately uh, sent a memorandum to all the seven uh, provincial election supervisors to explain within 48 hours why no disciplinary action will be meted against them. And I responded, the, their explanation was that uh, lack of sleep, uh, uh, the, the physical exhaustion, and the mix-up of all these COCs with the voluminous documents that were being prepared by these PEEs to the Provincial Board of Canvassers, to the uh, NBOC at the PICC, and then at the NBOC, NBOC in Congress. Yes, because if you recall, uh, Chairman, only 157 out of 173 uh, COCs were present in Congress when we started canvassing. And uh, considering that the elections took place more than two weeks before that, why were they not present? That's a heck of a long time. And that bothers everyone with a chain of custody. Viber is not the safest or most secure uh, mode of transmission for. But the actual certificate of canvas uh, were uh, sent and presented uh, to the NBOC in Congress the following day. Yes, that's right. But many of us still had questions. Where did the uh, officer find the missing COC? Where had he mistakenly placed it? If the election supervisor or officer concerned can remember, was it in the same place in the same day that he eventually found it? What's the reason? You said it was exhaustion, that he misplaced it in the first place, because it seems like very sloppy uh, conduct, that's all. So um, we're in the uh, business of solutions, and we want to know uh, what actions, like you said earlier, uh, they should be uh, cited administratively for failing to comply. No? That was one uh, suggestion from you, Mr. Chair. Is it advisable to reduce the number of copies of the COCs to lessen the possibility of error? Pero magre-reklamo naman lahat ng uh, recipient. Malaking issue yan eh. Kasi marami kaming rinerecommend na reduction eh. Parating uh, may malaking gulo eh. Uh, at uh, lahat gusto may kopya eh. Yun po. Angal yung mga political parties. Because we have a minimum of uh, 10... Uh, uh, major political parties, and we have the dominant uh, party and the uh, dominant uh, minority party. So, bali 12 po yun. Yes. Um, is it um, possible also maybe the law should allow for one alternate member of the Board of Canvassers to take some rest in between because it's really a long haul, to be fair. Pwede bang oh, okay, alternate? Pwede bang undue delegation na ba yun pag may isa pa? Para um, maghalim uh, So, ang member po ng Provincial Board of Canvassers, number one, ang Provincial Election Supervisor, number two, ang uh, uh, Provincial Prosecutor, at uh, number three, ang Treasurer po ng, yeah. ng Provincia. So, mahirap po kasi because they always have to, tama naman po yung suggestion niya na baka pwedeng magpahinga yung isa kasi uh, may quorum naman. Kaya lang po, Kung tutuusin po yung, yung canvassing naman natin ngayon, ilang oras lang naman po. Uh, so perhaps really the solution is... Uh, no, but they start really early. I mean, the canvassing is not an isolated uh, procedure. We know isang tuhog yan eh. Talagang, ang tagal naman nila talagang nagtatrabaho. You move from 3 o'clock, uh, in fact, in the morning, afternoon. That's right. Yeah. So perhaps uh, the solution really is... Because, uh, Madam Chair, matatanong din natin, bakit yung iba na ilagay sa box? Bakit yung ilan hindi na ilagay sa box? So something went wrong somewhere. So um, I think po na ipaubaya lang nila sa ibang staff yung paglalagay ng, ng COC sa loob ng ballot box. And that should not be the case. They should have verified na yung COC mismo nasa loob ng ballot box. Na. Isang, isang dokumento lang naman po yun eh. And so uh, human error really and we really admit na nangyari po talaga yung madam sila. Yes, that's uh, almost 10%, no? Those uh, 16 were missing out of the 173. So, yun nga, maybe we should consider 
uh, them shifting uh, or doing something to avert the utter fatigue and exhaustion engendered by this exercise. Um, the other thing is also uh, to record by closed circuit TV. Um, if that was something, even if it's only makeshift, yung viber, viber, it's not ideal, but at the end of the day, it's what we have. Yes, Attorney Hubert Guevara, please. Mama, if you recall, we were together in the canvassing yeah. area, you know, um, and this is really the bone of contention of a lot of the senators and uh, members of the House present during the time. No? Um, if I may suggest what I'm sure, and of course, with all due respect, uh, with, if the comic may, may uh, agree to this, is during the canvassing, which will may take about two um, two days or three days, even the provincial election supervisor should also be uh, present, or not even present, but even online. Yes. So that at any point in time, if there's a need, they could easily be called up, and they would have a copy of the uh, COC uh, made available immediately to the uh, board of canvassers. Instead of um, calling them, and sometimes it may be very difficult to uh, give them a call. Uh, so that uh, it will also hasten the process, uh, Madam Chair. Yes, I uh, was going to suggest also for Section 29, the unjustified failure to deliver COCs uh, shall be an election offense. Is uh, that uh, something that we should consider? And as an adjunct or alternative there to mere failure to deliver said COCs within the time prescribed may be an administrative offense. Yung undue delay. Actually, sa criminal law, infidelity in the custody of documents. Mas malupit po kayo. Fiscal ho ako eh. Kaya ho, medyo ayoko na magsalita. Salamat. <laughs> Maraming salamat. Yes, okay, so uh, in Congress... Madam Chair. Madam yes, Chair. Uh, uh, sino po yan? Yes, uh, Mr. Averia. Uh, with the use of all these technologies, I still wonder why the National Board of Canvassers still rely on the printed copies when the electronic copies can easily be transmitted. And then there's, you know, due execution with the use of digital signatures, for instance, so that you don't have to rely on, you know, the printed copies. Yes, uh, Commissioner Garcia seems to that, know the answer. That was what happened in the National Board of Canvassers for the senators and the yes, party list. correct. Exactly. No need, to, no need to compare, simply because we believe in the authenticity and due execution of what was electronically transmitted. However, the congressional rules drafted by Congress provides for... For a paper copy. A paper copy That's for right. purposes of authenticity and... Uh, due execution and perhaps maybe ma'am maybe uh, that's an amendment to our rules that we can take into consideration yeah. that's right uh, thank you mr averia yes um as i recall in congress the two days that we were there the uh, presence or absence of the commissioners on the second day was uh, questioned right and uh, the uh, mention of attorney guevara that the pes should at least have been on standby virtually uh, because in many cases they were impossible to find. And then some were also uh, not adequately prepared to answer and gave rather unsatisfactory answers, no? So, dapat yata may konting turo rin. Lack of preparation, no notice to the provincial election supervisors uh, to uh, make the COCs available on demand. Kasi walang tao doon eh. At, uh, Parating pinapagalitan si Director Flores kasi siya lang natira eh nung second day. Di ba? Samantalang uh, kinahanap yung mga commissioner and uh, so do we need to amend the law to require one commissioner at least during the canvassing by Congress? Maybe the rules, uh, uh, Madam Chair of the, of the uh, Joint Congressional Committee should include that there should always be commissioners and at the same time uh, uh, the presence of the provincial election supervisor or whoever is the chair of the canvassing body should be present either virtually or physically. I would like to greatly apologize really for not uh, being there on the second day on the part of us, the three members of the commission. We, we, we were facing the hearing of the commission appointment supposedly on that day. Which yes, I think there was a level of confusion. They called for a hearing, and then it was cancelled, and then it's been rescheduled, as I understand. And then in the afternoon, uh, Madam Chair, we canvassed the result from Lanao del Sur, 
uh, the CEO of the Lanao del Sur. With uh, a special uh, yes, re-election. For the party list, for the party list. Yeah. Yes, the special uh, party list election. Okay. Um, the law could also require the chairperson of each BOC to be within Metro Manila or at least virtually available, no? Uh, from the start until the COC prepared by the board concerned has been successfully canvassed. Hindi naman yung buo eh, at least hanggang matapos lang siya, di ba? So, post-election, um, the posting of election returns for national positions uh, should be posted by Comelec and its public website. I think it's incomplete still, is that correct? What is the status? The last time I looked, hindi pa siya kompleto eh. Eh, nagtatanong rin ng tao doon, bakit hindi ina-upload eh, lahat ng ER natapos na, nag-canvas na yung Senate at yung Congress. Madam Chair, per our uh, ITD Director, 98.4% of all the election returns that the, you, you, you are correct. It's not 100% complete, but 98.4% were posted already in the website of the Commission on Election. Okay. So, as uh, Attorney Guevara said, uh, the posting will level the playing field so that those with no budget uh, will tabulate on their own with source documents, and there's no need to spend for watchers and so on, since uh, the Comelec itself is uploading on its very own website. So those are rough. those are the allegations, charges, complaints that uh, we received. If there are any further questions, uh, the Comelec is here, and um, the other resource persons are here. Are there any uh, further uh, concerns that we need to deal with? Yes, incidents, Sarah Berry, uh, yes. incidents of vote buying. It appeared to have been prevalent during the last elections. Yes, that's a very, very serious issue, and I think it was a universal problem. So, uh, are, is there anything that we can do about the rampant vote buying? Yes, Commissioner Bulay, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. One specific uh, complaint regarding vote buying is that uh, the police and our election officers are requiring um, um, warrants to enter private uh, residences or private uh, resorts where such vote buying is allegedly held. That's right. Since they do not have the, the search warrant to do that issued by a competent court, they cannot go inside the private residences or resorts where such vote buying is uh, is uh, claimed to, to be happening, allegedly happening. So that's one aspect. That what can we do about that, Commissioner Bula? It's very, very difficult to get a search warrant. Yes. You yes. know better than we do. Um, well, I think it should be included in the proposed law. Yes. Because uh, it will definitely add jurisdiction to the lower courts during election period, which normally COMELEC has only. It yes. should be included in the in the uh, interagency uh, task force that's created. Yes, that's thank it. you very much for that. We really would need that if uh, uh, search warrants could be expedited and uh, given due course. In many, many cases, uh, they were very delayed or um, there were leaks already of uh, and news of their issuance. So, problem talaga yun. Uh, and uh, yes, also, sure. Madam Chair, we would like to propose uh, stiffer uh, penalties yes. for uh, vote buying because this has been well entrenched in every locality in the country. And uh, we, uh, we should uh, also work hard for the prosecution and possible conviction of uh, these uh, vote buyers. Kung hindi po natin ito ma, ano, makasampo. Lahat. Dapat pakyaw, dapat kasama lahat. Yung oh. nagbayad, yung tumanggap, yes. yung uh, uh, natutulog sa pansita ng mga official, lahat dapat kasali, di ba? Damay-damay. Kaya po kailangan may conviction yan para makapagbigay tayo ng uh, leksyon sa mga ano. 
Any other suggestions Advice. from Namfrel? Yes, Mr. Chair, I think that's uh, directly necessary. Eh, paano yung mga digital transfer? Dami ko narinig from QR code to hologram to Gcash to PayPal, lahat na. Madam Chair, for the record, maybe uh, may I recite for the record the following data. Based on our Contra Bigay task force, the Facebook page received 940 messages, complaints. Likewise, in the official email, it received 171 emails. The Comelec Law Department received 105 reports. And the Comelec Law Department has docketed 12 verified complaints. IBPQ, Quezon City, one case uh, received AMLC. No, Commissioner, payat yan. Yes, uh, Madam Chair. Sa dami na nakita natin, di ba, Mr. Uh, Averia, Namfrel, I'm sure you'll uh, stand by me na that's very much the tiny tip of giant iceberg. There was one report from the Anti-Money Laundering Council, Your Honor, on the two large amount of money withdrawn. It's in Ilocosur. And so... Hindi ako yun, ha? Kapit-bahay ko yun. Maybe one thing likewise, Your Honor. There was one instance in the past when the chairman was Comelec Chairman Sixto Brillantes. There was a resolution... He comes from Ilocosur, ha? Yes, but there was... He... There was a resolution prohibiting the withdrawal of 500,000 pesos or more in all banks in the country. It was questioned before the Supreme Court, but the Supreme Court was not able to resolve the case. So there was no withdrawal. Com businessmen were complaining in order to prevent uh, vote buying. Uh, although in that particular year, vote buying still persisted. But we can likewise include perhaps uh, or study That's in right. the anti money laundering law. That's right. Uh, vote buying for purposes of uh, of preventing uh, massive withdrawal or even prevention or suspension of any withdrawal of, from banks, Madam Chair, during the period at least 10 days before the election. But of course, the business community that uh, will complain that uh, trade and commerce will come to a standstill in that, uh, in that case. Um, okay. Um, perhaps uh, the issue of rampant vote buying is something that will need our uh, best counsel and uh, we really need to discuss that thoroughly. Um, we have a lot of very useful suggestions this morning and I believe these amendments will come in handy. So I will need your help from uh, the legal department of Comelec, from our IT who are more familiar with the process and also from the ICT and CICC, and most of all, of course, our poll watching bodies who uh, keep everyone uh, straight, honest, and uh, um, guarantee the conduct of free elections. Thank you very much for coming to this hearing. Um, I apologize for the uh, lateness of lunch and the coldness of the room. In fact, uh, we're very, very happy and uh, uh, grateful that uh, the uh, May 9 election was uneventful, successful, and uh, largely um, 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 according to uh, law, to uh, the expectations of our people, and uh, we are very, very uh, pleased with everyone's contribution from the ICT and the OST, CICC, uh, Comelec and IT. Uh, I also apologize. Sometimes the hearings in this uh, committee have been rancorous and uh, rather bitter. But truth to tell, I think we have a much better electoral process as a result. Congratulations to all. Thank you very much.
Bapak, 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 Bapak,